Hello and welcome fellow coders. Thank you so much for joining me for today's tutorial video. It is a very special topic to me. I'm going to talk about one of the best features Golang has to offer and that is interfaces. I know that some of you might already be familiar with the concept of interfaces from other programming languages, but in Go interfaces are a little different. Remember that in my video about structs I explained that you can use interfaces if you have shared behavior across your code. But what exactly are interfaces? You can think of an interface as a set of function signatures. If a type provides definitions for all the defined functions of an interface, it implements the interface. For example, an interface could be called animal and defining the functions eat and sleep. If a doc struct has the member functions eat and sleep, the doc struct implements the animal interface. I know, this is a super simple textbook example, so let me give you another one that is more related to the real world. In this example we have two structs, an employee and a freelancer. The employee has a yearly salary field, whereas the freelancer struct has two fields, rate per hour and hours worked. For simplicity's sake, all these fields are integer fields and we will be using those to calculate the respective salaries of both structs. Since we are going to do that for both structs, we have shared behavior between those. And as I said earlier, if you have shared behavior, you can use an interface. So that's exactly what we are going to do. Interfaces can be defined the same way as any other type in Go. First the type keyword, followed by a name and then the type. In this case, the type is interface. An interface contains a set of function signatures. So let's go ahead and define a function called salary, which takes no parameters but returns an integer value. And as I already said, if a type provides definitions for all the defined functions of an interface, it is said to implement it. So we need to make sure that the employee as well as the freelancer structs both provide their salary function. So let's go ahead and write a member function called salary for the employee struct. Okay, employee now has a function that has the same signature as the function definition in the interface. Therefore, the employee struct now implements the salary calculator interface. But how can we check that? We can define a new function that takes an arbitrary amount of salary calculators and calculates the total amount of salaries paid. This can be done by iterating over every single one of the past salary calculators and add the result of every single salary function called to the total variable. And yet, the total cost gets printed out. Pretty simple, right? Now, within the main function, we can go ahead and call the calculate total salaries function. If we hover over the function, we can see that it expects types of the interface. But since our employee struct implements the interface, we can go ahead and create an employee instance with a salary of, mm, let's say, $1 million and pass it into the function. Alrighty, let's run the code and see if it works. Awesome, the total salary paid is 1 million. But what about our fellow freelancers? Let's go ahead and create a freelancer instance. The rate per hour is let's say 200 and our freelancer has worked 1000 hours this year. If we try to pass an f as an argument to the calculate salaries function, we can see that the compiler is complaining. The error message though is pretty clear about what's wrong. It states that f cannot be used as a salary calculator because it is missing the salary function. Or in other words, the freelancer struct does not implement the salary calculator interface. To fix that, we need to write a member function called salary for the freelancer struct. You guessed it right. But since I'm pretty lazy, I'm going to copy and paste the member function of the employee struct and simply change the values. The salary for freelancers gets calculated by multiplying the hours worked with the rate per hour. Now, the calculate total salaries accepts f as an argument and we can go ahead and run our code again. And as you can see, the code works just fine. Ok, now let's go ahead and see what we have accomplished here. We have defined one common function or behavior but two completely different implementations. As for the function using the interface, the calculate total salaries function does not care how the salary function is implemented in each of its structs. It simply takes the fact that both of them implement the functionality and uses the result of the function call. Now for the next thing I want to show you, I'm going to need a second interface. The second interface is called hourly rate calculator and again has only one function called hourly rate. I guess it's pretty self-explanatory what this function will do. So with the magic of video editing, here are the implementations. First, let's start with the freelancer where the hourly rate is just the value of the rate per hour field. As for the employee, the hourly rate is calculated by using the scientifically proven and 100% accurate formula. Pretty standard stuff. Now for the fun part. Let's say we want to have an interface for both functions. Something like a salary calculations interface that contains the salary function as well as the hourly rate function. But sometimes you have types that do not need to implement all the functions of a given interface. Therefore it is better to keep the interfaces as small as possible. What you can do though is define a salary calculations interface and instead of defining the salary and hourly rate functions again, you can go ahead and use embedding. By doing so you can embed both other interfaces into the salary calculations interface. This basically basically works the same way as for structs. If you want to learn how embedding works, go ahead and check out my tutorial video about structs where I'm explaining it in great detail. 
By embedding interfaces, you can have your combined interface without having to change the smaller interfaces and their implementations. Even if you add an additional function to the salary calculations interface, you still do not have to change the existing code. That is the power of embedding and interfaces. And that is it for interfaces. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new and ring the bell. And until next time, keep on coding!